Hi, I'm Ann Emenheiser, the vegan athlete dietitian, and it's come to my attention recently that people are very interested in what dietitians themselves eat and what our lab values look like. So today I thought I would share my lipid panel. I have nine years worth of data that spans from being an omnivore to a junk food vegan to a healthy vegan. And it's anecdotal data, but I'm sharing it because people are interested in what dietitians lab values look like. So here's my total cholesterol. And on the y-axis, I have my age and years for when each of the lab values were taken. And it starts at 45 and a half, and it goes right up until my last one was right when I turned 54. The first five years, I was omnivore. And what I would say about this time period is my weight fluctuated, my diet fluctuated, and my level of fitness fluctuated. But it looks like my lab values are all pretty similar. They're either slightly below or slightly above that 200 milligram per deciliter threshold that is the recommended stay below. The next two years, I was a junk food vegan and I ate a lot of processed foods, a lot of pizzas and egg rolls and Oreos. And then the last two years, I was and am a healthy vegan. So you can see my total cholesterol dropped. So here's my LDL cholesterol. And the first five years, all my values were above the 100 milligram per deciliter threshold that it's supposed to be under. And I'm a little embarrassed by that, but it does get better. Uh, as a junk food vegan, it started to drop. And then of course, as a healthy vegan, it went all the way down to 70. So here's my HDL cholesterol. And for HDL cholesterol, you want 60 milligrams per deciliter or higher. And in the first five years, there was only one value that was below the 60 threshold. All the rest were 60 or better. And then as a junk food vegan, it dropped way down into the 40s. And I'm not sure how much of this was diet versus maybe less exercise. I don't recall being less active as a junk food vegan than when I was an omnivore. It seemed like it varied throughout but it could be that I had less physical activity as a junk food vegan. Then as a healthy vegan, it went back up. I was not only eating better, I was exercising regularly. And then my last value dipped a little bit below the 60, it's at 58. And it could be because I had just had surgery on a torn hip labrum and I wasn't able to run or cycle intensely. Here's where things get really interesting. The first five years, my triglycerides were well below the 150 milligram per deciliter threshold. Then as a junk food vegan, they spiked to 246 and 176. And this is all just because I was on a highly processed diet, vegan foods, but highly processed. We know that alcohol can raise triglycerides. And I should mention that I did not consume any alcohol in this time period. So it's all a result of the highly processed vegan foods I was eating. Then as a healthy vegan, my triglycerides dropped down even lower than when I was an omnivore, just slightly. So I actually think that my lab work is a very good example of just because you're on a vegan diet doesn't mean it's healthy. So obviously when I was on the junk food diet, it was probably worse than the omnivore diet. And it wasn't until I became an actual healthy vegan eating right and exercising that I saw all the benefits of what a vegan plant-based diet could do for me. So I just want to talk for a minute about the difference in my diet as a healthy vegan because there were two blood test results done in that time period and I had two very different diets. So my first lab test was done when I had, I had reduced calories, I had eliminated unhealthy processed foods. I had included processed high protein foods like tofu, meat analogs, and protein powders. My macros were 40 to 50% carbohydrate, 25 to 30% protein, and 25 to 30% fat. Once I reached my maintenance weight, I had a goal of one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I then took the eCornell plant-based certification course and I decided I would try whole food plant-based and that's when I became the healthy vegan too. So I was following the whole food plant-based diet 
I followed Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen and I added to it, I added chia seeds and soy products daily. I also rode the fence because I was not comfortable with how low a protein that they were suggesting down to 10%. So I had one protein shake a day with 30 grams of protein. So my macro breakdown was 48 to 68% carbohydrate, about 22% protein and 10 to 30% fat. So because I did see improvements by following the whole food plant-based diet in my lipid profile, but it came at the expense of my protein because for the first time ever, my protein levels were low. So I did a hybrid and that's what I do currently. I'm whole food plant-based. I follow Dr. Greger's daily dozen plus one tablespoon of chia seeds and one cup of soy a day. But I also include processed proteins. So powders, meat analogs, seitan, tofu, tempeh, TVP. And so I call this like a fit vegan or high protein, whole food plant-based. And my macros are back to what they were with the healthy vegan one, 40 to 50% carbohydrate, 25 to 30% fat, and 25 to 30% protein. So approximately one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, the things that I have deviated on from Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen is I don't have as many bean servings a day as he suggests. So I have at least a half a cup of beans a day. Sometimes in the winter, especially when I'm having lentils and soup a lot, then I'm having two servings of legumes a day. He really wants three, but because I have the meat analogs, you know, I have to have the calories come from somewhere. And then for the spices, he wants us to have turmeric powder every day, and I do that in the form of a supplement. And a lot of that is for anti-inflammatory as well. So here are the products that I consume on a daily basis for my heart health. I have steel cut oats for breakfast. I have ground flax seed in my steel cut oats. I have chia seeds in my smoothie, and I also like them sprinkled on berries. And I have a omega-3 DHA supplement every day as well. And in addition, I'm not eating any cholesterol and I limit my saturated fat. So it's a combination of what I'm including every day as well as what I'm minimizing or excluding from my diet. And my LDL right now is 70, so I'm pretty happy. It's well below the 100 milligram per deciliter threshold. So I'm pretty pleased with that lab value right now. So I think I'm on the right track and doing the right things. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up.